What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I thought I'd do something a bit different and a bit more informal. What I've gone and done is got all my samplers out and what I'm going to do is go through each individual one and tell you guys where I'm up to with it, if there's any problems, what maybe what I like about them as well and maybe what I don't like about them. Yeah, I thought it'd be quite fun to show you guys all the samplers that I've collected over the last kind of six or seven years I guess and which ones are my favourite etc. So. These are out in no particular order, they were just the way they were kind of put out when I was sorting them out before. And yeah, we'll start with the 2000 XL. Now, picked this up probably about a year ago. I uh, haven't really used this one too much, to be honest, and that's mainly because I find it very, very slow to use this. Now, if you can see on the front here, I've only got the floppy disk drive for this. So pretty much doing anything with this sampler is quite awkward. There's no built-in effects. I think the only built-in effect I've got on this is filter. So it definitely needs to be paired up with something, say like one of my SPs over here, just to get a bit more life into the beats. And yeah, I think this is a particularly hard device to use. The sequencer is amazing because it's an MPC, obviously. The sequencers are always really good on these machines. But in general, I've not really enjoyed using this too much. I have thought about selling it in order to buy something maybe a bit different. Uh, I put that out there on Instagram and everyone was saying, do not sell this device. So I'm kind of on the fence of what to do with this one at the moment. I do think it's a bit of a waste. It's just kind of sat on my shelf, but maybe one day I'll find some love for this device and be able to feel a bit more patient about it. So yeah, I do want to do a few more videos about how to use this device. I can't really get that greater results out of it, but I still know the workflows, etc. So. Maybe there will still be some more videos coming out about this on my other channel, NPC Vids, which I'll uh, link to below actually. I haven't really managed to get much stuff going on that yet, but this will probably feature at some point if I do get back to uploading to that channel. Okay, moving along, and it's another NPC, and this is the 2500. I absolutely love this device. The problem with it is loads of the pots have gone. So I've got a little bag of goodies here. I've got some fat pads and I've got a load of pots as well. I was thinking of trying to solve them myself, but thinking about it, it's probably not the best idea. So I'm going to have to somehow get this fixed. And I think there is one guy called Jazz Cat, which I'll probably end up using at some point for this. But I think to have this refurbed, etc., it's going to cost a little bit of money. And I don't really have that to be thrown around at the moment. So... For the time being, this is just kind of docked, but I do actually love this device and I made some really good beats on this one. It's pretty fast considering its age. It's got a CF card and I assume it must have some sort of internal memory as well. It's quite a quick device considering its age and this has got JJOS on it as well. So that made a few things really easy to do like chopping and moving through samples, etc. So yeah, I really gutted that some of the key buttons and I think one of the worst ones was um, back back to start. That stopped working and it was just infuriating to use. And I think tap tempo's gone. So I had to put tap tempo on a pad, which wasn't too bad. Um, but then as soon as it had a sample on it, if you started hitting that sample, it would change the tempo. So yeah, there's a few things that were wrong with this device, mainly the pots. And that meant I couldn't really use it anymore. But yeah, I really want to get this back into commission because this is a brilliant device. I absolutely love this device. I upgraded the RAM on this as well, which was really easy to do. It's similar to a computer. You just open the back up and slide a new one in. So yeah, OS, updated RAM. And I just, yeah, I need to get this going again because uh, I really like it. And one thing about this, which is cool as well, is you get USB. So you can transfer files directly onto it pretty easily as well. So yeah, killer device. A massive upgrade to the XL, that's a very vanilla sort of bare bones sampler. This is a nice upgrade. I know a lot of people say the sound of this one isn't very good, but I'll be processing most of my stuff through the SPs anyway, so this will just be a good sequencer and all around fun device to use. So yeah, that's the 2500, really keen to get that back into commission once I've got a bit more money together. Moving along to this very small device here, the PO33, and as you can tell, uh, for the meantime, uh, it's run out of batteries. I haven't used this device very much recently, but please let me know in the comments if there's still an appetite for tutorials about this device because I kind of think I've missed the boat with this one. But if you do want to see some tutorials, are people still buying these devices in 2022? I'd love to know. And yeah, I'm more than happy to do some tutorials about this device. I just don't really feel as much of an appetite for it anymore. Um, I haven't used it much recently, but there is some fun quirks to this. The repitching is awesome. Uh, that's our time stretching, whichever one it is. And you can get a really gritty sound from it. And if you want to hear kind of the sort of 
sound you can get from it, go in the description and go onto my SoundCloud and there's a, there's a little EP on there called PO33 Dreams. I didn't use the sequencer on this for it, but I did chop all the samples and repitch them all, etc., with this device and then used an SP to, uh, to accompany it. So it's a very interesting little device. The price of them is insane now. I got this when it was pretty affordable. Uh, I desperately need to get a case for it. That's one thing which I think will make me use it a lot more. And yeah, obviously I need some new batteries as well. So yeah, the PO33, cool little device. Definitely want to be using that more in the future. And yeah, please let me know if you want to see more videos about that and more tutorials. Now, moving along my latest acquisition to the collection, the 404 Mark II device that you've seen so much of on the channel over the last couple of months and is an insanely good device this I absolutely love the Mark II it's such an upgrade from the SX and it's just such a fun device to use absolutely loving this device I don't really want to say too much about this because obviously I'm putting out a lot of video content about this at the moment but it's a great great device and unfortunately the wait times for this at the moment are a bit ridiculous but if you can get hold of one, I do really recommend them. I think, especially if you're thinking of getting either this or an SX, definitely go for one of these now because it's just like basically a turbocharged version of it and it's got a lot of the features you would expect to have on a beat making machine, which the SX and the A doesn't. So yeah, I'll move on from that now because we've already got enough content about this on the channel and there's gonna be more, so we'll move on from that one. Now, this is an interesting one, the MPC Live 2. This is a great, great device. The only downside I find of this is that I tend to find myself spending more time pressing these buttons than I do pressing these buttons. So there's a lot of menu diving with this device, but I do need to do more with it. I do really, really like the whole workflow. Obviously, because of my other MPCs, I'm used to the MPC workflow and it's very similar on this. It's kind of track based and sequence based and you are building different parts of the track. It's a really good device. It's very, very powerful. The built in effects are awesome. I really enjoy using them and you can definitely get a good lo-fi sound out of this on its own. So in combination with say this or any of these, you can certainly get a great lo-fi sound out of this device. And again, yeah, the sequencer is absolutely amazing because it's MPC. The pads are really, really nice. I love the pads on this and in general, a very, very good device, and I just need to spend some more time with it. I have been playing with it now and again, and every time I make a beat on it, I kind of think, why aren't I making more beats on this thing? Um, it's really easy to save beats as well and bring them back up, so yeah, I do need to spend more time on this, to be fair, and probably want to do a, a sort of whole tape with this. Maybe I'll do that next, actually. I can combine it with this, obviously, um, or any of my devices. Um, but using this as the brain is definitely something I need to do for a, for a release. So yeah, that's the Mark II, a great device. And if you're looking to get a Live 2, yeah, highly recommend it as well. So moving on to the SX, this is kind of a legend on this channel, really. This is the whole reason I'm here, nearly at 20,000 subs now, all started on this device and buying this device and just thinking of things that I could talk about related to it, ways to use it, hacks, customizations, all that kind of thing. So. If you do want dials, by the way, I actually sell them in my store, so go and have a look at those. These are the kind of old-fashioned chicken head ones, which they're not great for live because if you go to grab it and it's in the wrong position, it can be a bit fiddly, but in the studio, these are awesome. And uh, yeah, they just look pretty cool as well. So I can ship all over the world, but unfortunately, because of COVID and going transatlantic as well, I do have to charge for tracked shipping because it gets too confusing otherwise. So yeah, the SX, a legendary bit of gear. Unfortunately, since I bought the Mark II, I've hardly used this at all, just because the Mark II offers everything that this one doesn't, basically. So it has been overshadowed by its younger brother that's just come along, but I will never let go of this device. This has got such sentimental value for me, and that's actually a video I'm gonna be doing soon about this device, so I won't say too much about that, but great device. If you're wondering about these pads, these are fat pads from MPC Stuff. I think these are the top of just normal pads, but they're black, again, from MPC stuff. They're not the fat pads at the top, but you can see here the depth of these. These um, make the playing of this device a lot better, and I mean a lot better. They are a bit pricey, but they're really, really cool. And yeah, I've got a full video about fitting those as well, which was quite a tense one if you have watched that. But yeah, it's pretty easy to do. If you don't mind opening stuff up and putting it back together, if you feel comfortable enough doing that, it really is kind of plugging in things and unplugging them. It's quite easy to do. 
Um, but yeah, you can watch my full video about that if you need to. Just search in my uh, in my channel, um, fitting NPC pads to the SX. You'll definitely find it, and uh, yeah, I'll do a full run through of that. So, so yeah, a legendary bit of gear. I really enjoyed using this to make loads of beats. Um, but now, yeah, with the with the Mark II, this has just kind of become a bit redundant, unfortunately. But yeah, definitely will never sell this device. It's means everything to me and it's just the reason why I'm here like I said so yeah more about that in an upload coming soon so these two are the last ones I'll start with the 303 this doesn't get used much in my workflow unfortunately the best thing about it is the built-in effects they sound so buttery and it's something to do with the circuitry or something but the effects on this device are absolutely killer now the price of them now is ridiculous so i don't think it's worth it just for the effects at the time when i got it, it definitely was and you can see here similar to the offerings of the uh the sx a, a few less but for some reason i don't know what it is if someone knows the exact reason why there's just something about the effects on this unit they just sound perfectly engineered uh the lo-fi and long modes are really nice. The uh, ob Obviously the vinyl sim compression, which when you use vinyl sim on this, you get a compression on the left hand dial and it just sounds absolutely amazing. I've got a video about that I think at some point as well. But yeah, all in all, it's mainly the storage issues that I have with this, why I don't use it that much. It uses these old cards like this. Yeah, it uses the old smart media card, so 16 megabyte card, I mean it it's just mental thinking about that sort of size now, isn't it, for storage. It's just absolutely crazy. So yeah, it uses these smart media cards. And funnily enough, when you use the banks that use the cards, which I believe is C and D, it's like twice as fast as when you use the internal memory. Uh, the internal memory on this is very slow for deleting things. Uh, this obviously is iconic in the kind of lo-fi hip-hop scene. Uh, you'll see this a lot paired next to an MPC, for example. Um, but yeah, I just don't really use this device very much anymore. Um, Again, that could be one that could leave my collection at some point, I think, but not for now. Um, I just want to definitely make sure I at least do a release with this as well before I ever think of selling it. But, I mean, people you know, people say, hold on to it. Why, why don't you hold on to it? You'll regret it. But it's like, well, if I'm not going to use it, what's the point in having it here? I'd rather have someone making beats with it, to be honest. Could be worth something one day, I guess, and it's in very good condition. That's the things that it's got going for it. There is a bit of wear on the screen, which I need to sort of... Try and see if there's a way to solve that. I think it's just scratching. But all in all, a very, very good device. Um, very nice condition. Everything works fine. It just doesn't really get used that much just because of the storage and the speed of it, really. And I'll just move these around so we can get a better shot of the 202. 202 is one of my favourite pieces of gear. This is last but by no means least, absolutely, because this thing is so, so nice for processing samples and drums. Again, the problem with these is they've gone stupidly expensive in price and now they're not really worth buying just for the effects and the uh, sample rates. So you can see here, you can sample at different rates, hi-fi standard, lo-fi one, lo-fi two, and you can get some insane grit from this. That combined with the pitching and the filter one, yeah, it's it's amazing for lo-fi really. It's like really, really crunchy, raw lo-fi. You can get some amazing sounds out of this. You can use this one without a memory card. I don't have one because they're super expensive to get hold of. Someone offered me one once actually and never followed it up and it was really cheap. Maybe I should try and message him and see if he still got them. Um, but yeah, I use this a lot. I used it on my last uh, release to process samples with. And this always seems to get a little bit of a feature in my workflow. I don't know why. It just It's just... The novelty of it, I think the shape, the aesthetic of it, and the sound, everything, it just rolls in and it's a, it's, it just all rolls into one and it's just a really, really great device. So I've got a lot of time for the 202 and that frequently gets used. And again, this is a, a really good condition one. I think the only thing I can find that's wrong with this is this tiny little chip here. But apart from that, it's in very, very good condition. So both of those units I actually shipped over from Japan and uh, yeah, got lucky with them both. and. Definitely got lucky with the timing of me buying those because over the last couple of years, the prices of these two has gone absolutely stupid. It's like too expensive for them to be worth it, in my opinion. I would not recommend getting either of these devices anymore. I think most of the bases can be covered with something like, you know, the MPC Live 2 or the Mark 2. All around, these are just much better devices, okay? The effects on these are very authentic and great sounding, but you can still make great beats with devices like this. It's all about how you use them, not what they 
offer you really. So I think that's it guys, that's all the samplers that I own. Some of them get used a lot, some of them don't get used very much. And it does seem like a bit of a crazy collection now to be honest. I think there's, um, there's a lot of good devices in this collection. The one thing I wish I would have done is bought a bit more variety. I think I've bought a lot of SPs over the years just because of the channel really and wanted to do content about them but I kind of wish I would have branched out a little bit more and got some different devices and that's kind of what I'm looking at at the moment really. If I can afford to, to pick up a new piece of gear this year it won't be any of these makes. It won't be a Roland and it won't be an Akai. It will be something completely different. So I've got my eyes on some stuff um, but yeah, it really does depend on, on uh, funds this year. Great pieces of gear, all of these. I love all of them in their own different way. I hate some of them in their own different ways. Um, but yeah, all in all, that's my collection. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Please let me know if you've got any of these below. I'd love to know what you've got in your collection. And also, yeah, just again, as I mentioned before, if you want to see videos about the PO33, let me know. I do want to try and start making the content on the channel a bit more diverse and not just about sps all the time so let me know about that thanks for watching guys i really appreciate it don't forget you can support me in all the ways below beat packs and t-shirts i would really appreciate it if you could look at those i hope you enjoyed looking around my collection and i'll be back with more content very soon peace